potential for bioactive peptide ingredients in skincare products is enormous, especially when you consider the diverse assortment of molecules available to the cosmetic formulator today. In the past decade, we have seen the use of peptides increase every single year. While they were first introduced in cosmeceuticals to fight the signs of aging skin, you can now find them in products to treat hyperpigmentation, as well as in products formulated specifically for sensitive skin. So what are peptides exactly? Peptides are small fragments of protein molecules. We often hear that amino acids are the building blocks of proteins. But proteins consist of hundreds of amino acids that make fairly large molecules. When only a few amino acids are grouped together, we get a smaller molecule that is known as a peptide. Peptides are chains of at least two amino acids that are linked by a peptide bond. When there are less than 20 amino acids in this linkage, we often refer to that peptide as an oligopeptide. When more than 20 but less than 100 amino acids are linked together, it's called a polypeptide. So how do we get to be a protein molecule? Proteins are long chains of amino acids that can reach a thousand or more links. Collagen in our skin is an example of a protein of this size. The human body uses 20 different amino acids to build proteins, such as our collagen or elastin, keratin, even enzymes and muscle tissue are all protein made up of amino acids. These amino acids are often included in skincare products to achieve a specific end result in a cosmetic formula. For example, the amino acids serine and threonine and alanine are used in moisturizing skincare products as these amino acids are found in the skin's natural moisturizing factor. When several amino acids with a defined sequence and structure are combined in the laboratory, the end result can be a peptide chain with a specific biological activity. For example, a peptide fragment made up of three amino acids called glycine, histidine, and lysine exhibits wound healing properties. However, these very same amino acids in a different sequence can have an entirely different function on the body. When we flip the histidine and glycine order, we now get a peptide that has a lipolytic or lipid breakdown property rather than wound healing. It's this type of controlled influence that peptides exert on our skin that has cosmetic scientists so excited about the potential of peptides in skincare. So how do peptides function in the skin? They act as chemical messengers. We often refer to them as signal peptides because they tell cells what to do. Of all the potential commands, the area most studied by scientists is that of signaling fibroblasts to make collagen. Obviously, these peptides have a huge potential in anti-aging skin care. Other signaling peptides help to control melanogenesis or help fight glycation and even to desensitize the skin. So how do these peptide fragments elicit a signal? The amino acids making up the peptide often mimic a portion of a larger molecule. Sometimes these are referred to as hormones or growth factors, and they're responsible for triggering a biochemical pathway in the cells or our body. The synthetic peptide molecule binds to receptors in these cells in a lock and key type of fashion, and it triggers the same biochemical reaction to occur. That's how a synthetic peptide molecule can trigger collagen synthesis in the fibroblast cell of our dermis. Let's take a closer look at some of these amazing peptide molecules, but first let's talk about how they're named. I'm going to use as an example for us palmitoyl pentapeptide. This is perhaps the most studied peptide molecule in skincare. There are two parts of a peptide's name to consider. First, let's look at the peptide portion of the molecule. That would be pentapeptide for our example of palmitoyl pentapeptide. Penta refers to the number of amino acids in the peptide. Penta indicates five amino acids make up the peptide but it doesn't necessarily mean there are five different amino acids. As a matter of fact, there's actually three different amino acids, two of which are used twice. Now let's look at the second part of the name. The palmitoyl refers to a fatty acid, palmitic acid in this case, that is attached to the peptide to help get it into the skin. If I were to put the peptide by itself on the skin, the barrier lipid layer would most likely prevent it from penetrating. By adding the fatty acid portion, we make it more lipid loving so it can penetrate through this barrier lipid layer. As a matter of fact, adding the fatty acid to the peptide can enhance the penetration of our peptide from 100 
to a thousand times. This depends on the particular peptide being studied. Now that we understand what our molecule is, let's look at how it functions. Palmitoyl pentapeptide acts as a messenger signaling fibroblasts to make collagen and gags. Studies have shown that collagen 1, the wrinkle-fighting collagen, was increased by 117%. And collagen 4, the anti-sagging collagen, was increased by 357%. Gags, or the glycosaminoglycans, that help the dermis stay hydrated and supple, was increased by 267%. The end result is a 27% decrease in wrinkle depth, a 13% reduction in skin roughness, and a 36% reduction in wrinkle volume. These findings were actually reported by Dr. Revu at the 20th World Congress in Dermatology. Two other proteins that have been synthesized and developed by the same laboratory include palmitoyl oligopeptide and palmitoyl tetrapeptide 7. Together, these two peptides work synergistically and act as a cell messenger to stimulate the wound healing process, which of course includes collagen synthesis. Results of a clinical study indicated a 37% reduction in the density of wrinkles and a 14% reduction in skin roughness with a 15% reduction in the wrinkle depth when this complex was used. In addition to these three superstar peptides, there are many other collagen stimulating peptides that are being used as well. These include palmitoyl tripeptide 5, hexapeptide 11, palmitoyl tripeptide 34, palmitoyl hexapeptide 14, and bipeptide 2, just to name a few. By the way, the number that follows the peptide name is an arbitrarily assigned number that's used in ingredient nomenclature, and it doesn't refer to anything significant like the number of amino acids in our peptide. I mentioned earlier that peptides send messages affecting other cellular processes in addition to collagen stimulation. There are peptides that act as sugar traps to help control glycation. This is a natural process that occurs in living tissue when protein molecules such as collagen react with sugar molecules. The result of this glycation reaction is inflammation and collagen cross-linking which really results in prematurely aging skin. Peptides such as arginine lysine polypeptide can bind to free sugar molecules helping to control the glycation process. There are also peptides that can help control melanin formation. Oligopeptide 34 and a newer molecule called oligopeptide 51 are two of the most effective peptides that can inhibit melanogenesis and are used to treat hyperpigmentation. There are even peptide molecules that are being studied for their ability to help control inflammatory mediators. Acetyl tetrapeptide 15 is used in cosmeceuticals to help control skin sensitivity. When used in a product that's topically applied to the skin, it makes highly reactive skin less reactive, which makes it fantastic for use in products for sensitized, inflamed skin. There's another class of peptides that we really need to mention. They're being used in skincare to claim to function in the same way that Botox does when injected by a dermatologist in the skin. These wrinkle relaxers are referred to as Argyroline or SNAP8 and Acetyl Hexapeptide 3. Without going into too much detail here, let's suffice it to say that the topical application of these peptides for a targeted site such as a deep nerve muscle interface that will address contractions of muscles has not been scientifically proven in real living tissue. So you can see, peptides are not just for fighting aging skin. They can be used for sensitive skin and to help fight pigmentation. Scientists continue to find new peptides every single year. And some of the areas being investigated to date include peptides for cellulite reduction, for hair growth, and even to control hair loss. The possibilities using these powerful peptides are endless. I have no doubt that peptides will prove to be one of the most significant achievements in advancing skincare technology.